Meanwhile, let's get... Welcome back to Novs Explorer Radio. First of all, we want to wish all of our listeners a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Let's go through the keyhole and check out where the Novice Explorers are living now. Hello and welcome back to yet another Flora and the Novice Explorers video. This one is going to be quite different. There's no camper van. This week it's all about caravan and we're now showing you around our static caravan home. Many of you would have seen snippets of this over the last few weeks during our live streams and maybe Instagram posts possibly. Yeah. And people have been asking about it because obviously it's not, not the most usual um, living circumstance. True. We really love living in here. We lived here for three or four months before we went on our European adventure. And now we've been here for another three months, but this time it's winter and it's ever so slightly different. It's a little bit more challenging and definitely not for everyone. However, living this way can be quite comfortable and we really, really love it. Yeah, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons and all of the features and fun things that we have got in our home, basically. So the first thing that we want to talk about is size. Uh, the caravan measures 36 by 12 foot, so a few more inches more living space than we had in Flora. And the, one of the biggest bonuses is that you can actually stand up straight in here. Look at all this room we've got. We're, no, we're not living like this anymore in the van. It's a 2012 model. One thing that we want to point out as well is that we don't own the caravan or the land that it is sited on. Um, it's the only one here on a family friend's farm. So without any further ado, let's show you around our crib. So as you enter through the front door, you come into an area where you can store your boots and shoes and your coats. We also have the gas central heating unit here and a cupboard for all of our cleaning essentials, the hoover and bits and pieces. And possibly a place where you can just store stuff that doesn't have a home. On with the slippers. So walking through the archway, we are then into the heart of the home, the kitchen. We've said that living in a caravan is a bit of a halfway house between living in a house and living in a van. But one thing that is very much of an upgrade from Flora is the kitchen. I must admit this is the place where I spend most of my time now, especially now that we have an oven, a grill and a four burner hob. We can stand to do the washing up, which is glorious. And we've got a massive fridge and a little freezer in the top, which, I don't know, it makes us think that we might need one in Flora. Maybe not quite this big. We have a microwave as well and just loads of storage space to store all of our goods and food and stuff like that and it's just a really nice open plan space that flows into the front room and i like all of the furnishings in here the wood effect the floor and i think our landlords have put up some um more modern wallpaper than what was there before what did you not expect from living like this in a caravan um i think it's the stigma well, first of all, when it was offered to us, we were like, no, thank you. And when we tell other people that we live in a caravan, they're like, what? But I think once you see the inside, it really changes people's perception of it. And these days, I'm not really sure if living in like a brick house with bricks and mortar is actually that worth it, especially in regards to cost. So what's nice about this part of the caravan in particular is the sort of open plan feel it has. So the kitchen leads right into this lovely, big, spacious living room, just through this archway here. There's no doors and there's actually quite a big sort of window uh, in the kitchen that you can see into the living room. So what's nice is that you can continue your conversation in the kitchen and the living room with ease and it just gives a whole nice feel to it really. So something that we both love about the living room is its size and how much light it can let in due to all the big windows we have. Lovely bay window here. We've got a big um, sliding French door that side of the room. And especially in the summer, it just lets in loads of really nice light. And the room feels spacious because of the furniture. Now the furniture is both a pro and a con in a way. It's a pro because we didn't need to source any when we moved in. 
but it's a con because it's kind of fixed in position. Uh, that sofa is also a double pull-out bed, and this is they're comfortable sofas, but they are fixed in position, which means that there's only a limited amount of things you can do with the space until you start um, peeling things out of their position. Another thing that's really handy is that there's actually plenty of storage in this sofa here as well, and obviously we've got our cupboards in the corners of the room too. What's the worst thing about living in the caravan? The worst thing at the moment is the cold in the mornings. It doesn't make you want to get up on time and we rely very heavily on the heaters. So one of my favourite features of the living room, if not the whole caravan itself, is this log burner. Now this does a tremendous job at warming up almost the entire caravan and making it feel really cosy. But as you might know, these aren't really fitted as standard in these types of caravans, so this was fitted after the fact, but we love it. I don't know what we'd do without it, especially now that we're heading into the deep winter. Uh, we don't have a TV in the living room. Obviously, we do watch a lot of uh, Netflix and stuff on the laptop, but we don't have a big TV anywhere here, so we spend our evenings just watching the fire crackle. And now on to our very Christmassy Christmas tree. This year we've gone for a slightly more environmentally conscious choice in going for a potted tree, which we hope to plant in the garden in the new year. The only issue is I've got to try and keep it alive in this room until then. Over the years I've managed to accumulate quite a few different Christmas decorations, but when we moved into here we had a real big sort out. We now have just one box of our very, very special bits and pieces and our favourite Christmas decorations. My favourite Christmas decoration has to be the beetle hanging ornaments. They have been spray painted by myself, so it looks like my sister's 1973 beetle, Gabriel. If there's one thing you'd change, good or bad, what would it be? Um, the one thing that I dislike about the decor is the terracotta carpets. It's very difficult to uh, match with a certain colour, um, so I'd like to change the carpets, but big job, quite a costly job. So now we're going to move on to see the rest of the caravan and we're going through our first door that leads off the kitchen. This leads to a nice little hallway with various doors for the various rooms. You may notice that it's slightly dark through here, that's because the bulbs have blown and we're yet to source some suitable replacements, so <laughs> we get by, we make it work. Uh, the first door on the right here leads to nowhere, that's just our gas water heater that does all the hot water in the caravan, really good showers, baths if you fancy it, and uh, obviously all the hot taps in the kitchen and the bathroom as well, it's absolutely perfect and really efficient. So the first room we're going to go to is this one on the left. It's one of the smaller rooms, but it is quite a fun room for me at least. It is my office. <laughs> so this is <laughs> my office. It's a little bit tight, but it works for me. We bought this uh, really big computer desk. Didn't know the dimensions off Facebook. Absolute bargain. Perfect for the laptop and the keyboard and mouse and all that stuff. We've got dual screens, which helps with video editing. Um, it's a nice small room, so it's nice and easy to heat. Got plenty of storage here for our camera gears, all my electrical bits and bobs, and they're easier to access. I also keep my musical instruments in here as well. Um, Meg doesn't like to hear me playing them very often. The, uh... it wouldn't, I wouldn't mind if you played the whole song, not the same bit over and over <laughs> again. <laughs> I tried to serenade her, but she doesn't appreciate my art. I've got a nice little window here, though that is sometimes has the blind drawn because the light comes in straight onto the screens and makes life a little bit harder than it has to be. There's a bit more storage in the corner here. That's full of camping gear and stuff we rarely get out, to be honest. I think this technically would be the second bedroom, but it's very, very small. Maybe enough for a cot or a very small single bed. But um, for me, Meg, it works perfectly as a little office space. Eagle-eyed viewers may recognise that the chair I'm sat on has exactly the same upholstery as Flora does. Um, some of you may remember that my sister did the upholstery and we had some leftover fabric. So Meg bought this chair for £10 from a charity shop and we just gave it a new lease of life. The only thing about this room that caused us a real headache was getting the furniture in. The doorways leading to this room are extremely narrow. That meant that the chair had to come in through the window uh, the desk had to be taken apart and built from scratch once it was inside the room, as does the bookcase. So this furniture is very permanent in here at the moment until we take it apart.
how would you upsell um, if you're a caravan salesman? How would you sell it to people? Um, that it's simple living. Um, it's very cost effective com compared to renting a place. Um, you can buy one outright for what would be kind of like a deposit on a house or even less than that. And for us, I think it's a very similar way of living the van life, um, but on a bigger, more um, not let, not so nomadic scale. More of a permanent dwelling. Yeah, more of a permanent dwelling, yeah. Another door leading off the very dark corridor is our boudoir. And into the bedroom we come where the first thing that we notice is that we don't have to pull the bed out every night and put it away every morning. The bed itself cost £5 from Facebook, which we picked it up. It was about to go on a scrap heap, but we salvaged it and it works perfectly for us. Got a bit of a vintage flair to it too. Just like the living room, the bedroom has plenty of built-in storage, which is perfect, just the right amount of room to put all of our clothes and bits and pieces. The bed also has drawers too, but the only con about the storage is that we can't really move any of it around or take bits out or add anything to it because it's all screwed in place and it all looks pretty cool, especially those personalised knobs which our landlords did before we moved in, which we love. The bedroom isn't that Christmassy. I've put a few battery powered twinkly lights and a little Christmas tree my granddad made. But one fun fact is that this bedding, this linen set, was the first linen set we bought as a couple before we even thought about van life. What are the chances, eh? Seeing as though we're right back at the caravan, the log burner heat doesn't quite get this far. But this bedroom is the perfect size to use our electric heaters, which are pretty good, but we try not to use them too much just because the electric meter goes round like a Swiss watch. Watch. <laughs> watch. <laughs> and what is one thing that you wish you had in the caravan that you don't currently? I don't really think we're missing that much, especially in regards to how we live during van life. We've got so much more now, so much more space. We've got all of our sort of stuff here. And compared to like living in the bricks and mortar, I don't think there's anything we're missing. One thing I would wish was a little bit better is the bath. It's a luxury to have one in the caravan, but it's kind of the size of a large dog basket. <laughs> so it's not the most comfortable or relaxing experience, but it's definitely a bonus. But I don't really feel as if we're missing that much. Maybe our own stamp on it, because obviously the decor is pretty standard across these caravans so maybe like putting our own stamp on it would be nice and finally leading off the bedroom we do have a pretty good ensuite bathroom which is quite a substantial upgrade from what we're used to traveling in flora so the features of our ensuite bathroom include a porcelain toilet once again we can sit on porcelain to do our doo-doo woohoo other features include a Boston shower. Cal's already mentioned that the water heater is fantastic and there's nothing worse than a crap shower. Who's with me on that? As a part of the shower, we have like a bath enclosure, which is pretty good. It means I can soak my dreadlocks and have like a little sit down showery half bath if you stick your legs up the side of the shower, but it works pretty well for the space that's given for a very small bathroom. So what's your favourite aspect of living in the caravan? I would say location is a good one. Nature is right on our doorstep. Although where we did live in the flat, we were pretty close, but here we're not really surrounded by anything. So to be able to just leave the door and just get lost is a real big bonus. Also, <laughs> also I do like how cozy it can feel when you get the lighting right, when you've got the log burner on. Um, the feel of it is really, really nice, especially in the colder months. So now we're just going to take a few minutes to weigh up what we think are the pros and cons of living in the caravan. Obviously, it's not going to be for everyone. What we think is a pro, some people might think is a con. But this is just our little list of what we've learned, what we like and what we don't really like about living in the caravan. So pros, it takes very little time to clean because it's so small. But then it can get dirty quickly because of that as well yeah like it doesn't take much like if you do like a big meal the kitchen yeah. looks like a bomb site but then it doesn't take long to clean up it's just 
balancing it out. Yeah, and if you come inside with your shoes on, <laughs> there's going to be bits and dirt and mud everywhere. Uh, another pro is the space around us. Obviously, we said we're out in the sticks. It works really well for us, but it wouldn't be for everyone. Um, a lot of people would think maybe living here is boring because there are no nightclubs. Shops in walking distance. <laughs> but, I mean, it suits us um, really well, especially, obviously, with the lockdowns and stuff. Uh, we can get outside and not really see anybody at all and sort of get lost in the countryside. So that really is a big pro for me. Yeah, and just down the road is Cal's family. We live on a farm that's owned by our family friends and it's very, very short distance for just to escape and go on a walk. All great walking routes uh, kind of just up the road from us. And also depending how it's set up, it can be a lot cheaper than living in a house, especially if you balance things right. I mean, now we're going into the colder months, as we said earlier, if we were really bad, we could be rinsing the gas. Yeah. We get the big colour gases that are like f five foot tall, don't we? But we can make one of those last about a month. Now it's winter. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, they lasted a long time because we weren't using the heating, just yeah. the hot water. And they cost £63 a pop delivered to us. So. Yeah. I mean, our friends that lived here previously said one winter they got through one of those in a week because they just had the heating on and constantly. They, they've got young kids as well that they needed to keep warm. Yeah, so that, that could be a con. It depends really. But then in the summer, we won't be using it at all. So that's when it sort of balances itself out. Yeah. Um, we really enjoy living in such a compact space. I don't think footage wise, it's that different from what we were living in the flat, but then it kind of meets halfway with living in the van because we are out in the sticks we are using gas and we are off the grid a little bit more um but it's again much bigger than flora we can stand we've got a lot more mod cons mm. it's the perfect uh, middle ground and it's a lovely little bolt hole that we can live in when we're here when we're saving again but as soon as it's ready for adventure we can lock up we can turn the water and gas off and we know that everything will be safe and and stored until we come back yep. from the adventure um for you i imagine it's great to have a proper kitchen yeah love the um, kitchen oven grill warmer uh just electric when you need it like 240 volt just that's very handy <laughs> yeah and for you to have all of your gadgets to hand without them being stored all away and if the table's up for instance in the van it's a nightmare yeah. to get hold of yeah. anyway on to the cons i think we've already gone into quite a lot of detail that it can be very cold during winter so we're making the most of the heating options we have and just being sensible in what we wear and um, stocking up on things like wood and things like that we could have internet access here, but because we're quite out of the way, um, my parents' landline, for example, they got broadband, but it's extremely slow. Um, so we rely on our phone contracts, which are really good here. We've got perfect signal and we just had decent phone contracts and we haven't had a problem. Yeah. Really. So we're with Voxy, who are part of Vodafone, and their um, contracts are really good. Well, actually, to be honest, there are no contracts. It's a yeah. monthly plan, so you can pay, change it as you go along. But they give you, um, on my tariff, I get free social media. So that doesn't, doesn't come out of your data. And also I get free video pass as well. So Netflix and YouTube also doesn't use your data. Um, for anyone that's interested, I think we get you a Amazon voucher. If you sign up, just contact us for a link. Uh, we'll get one as well, so it is kind of an affiliate link. But if you're interested, have a look at Voxy Plans and then ask us for a link. Yeah, you pay £20 a month, I pay £15 a month, and that does us very well, doesn't it? Never run out of date yet. No. It's been flawless. And it know. was pretty good on the road as well. You had it, I've had it since. So. Yeah. And we streamed, we stream live, and it's never let us down. So yeah, it's been, yeah. been really good. So the only thing that's left on the cons list is that it's a bit of a drive to the nearest town, to the shops, to the pubs, not that they're open now and whatever, but it's a little bit of a commute for me. And then it's even more of a commute to you to the next town where you where, where your employment is. Yes, but that doesn't, yeah. That's a choice and it's going to be a bit of a way if we lived in this area anyway. So they're like our two main points really for um, the cons. So that pretty much concludes our little caravan tour. We hope you've enjoyed it. And this video has been one of the most requested for a while. So here we are. This is where we're at. Yeah, we should have updated you sooner, really. But 
living in the caravan is somewhat normal to us now. It is our home, but obviously it's not um, a very common thing for people to do. So definitely you guys have had questions and queries and wanted to see a bit more. So we've hopefully shown you all the good bits and the bad bits and... An honest review of our current living situation. Yeah. Um, if you have any more questions or queries, feel free to pop them in the comment section below or over on our email address. We've got Facebook, Instagram, all those links will be in the video description down below. Uh, one thing we were wondering, if any of you guys watching at home have ever lived in a static caravan or a mobile home, have you got any top tips for us, especially in regards to the cold? Yeah, because we're in December now, it's getting chilly, but we know that it's going to get a lot worse than it is now. We've only had like one frost and a tiny bit of sleety snow, so uh, <laughs> it's a long way down from here. And fingers crossed that the pipes don't freeze, because I know that that's also an issue. <laughs> oh, it's just, you know, these things are sent to test us. Oh, yes. So if you've enjoyed this video in any capacity, please feel free to give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out with the algorithm and it lets us know that we're doing a good job and you guys are enjoying it. If you're not subscribed, please feel free. It's free to subscribe. We've got content coming up. There will be more exciting stuff in the future. And this is where we'll be spending Christmas Day. So from our home to your home, Merry Christmas. And we hope you are keeping well and safe. And in the new year, we've got adventures coming up, hopefully, fingers crossed. We'll see where the world goes and uh, what we can plan. But yeah, there'll be plenty more coming. Yes, so we will see you in the next one. See you later. So into the bedroom we come and the first point that we need to... Nope. So into the bedroom we come and the first point to point out... no. Nope. So what's quite nice about this part of the <laughs> So what's quite nice about this part of the cat car <clears throat> Three, two, one. Nice and flowing. So if someone's in the kitchen, you can still be talking when you're in the li li in the living room. <laughs> Unit. We'll show you more about that later. That's where the, all the dials are to make us get up in the morning. Wow. It was so good up to that point. Keep it simple, keep it simple. Yeah, we should, probably should have updated you guys sooner, really. Coming back to the cab. Go. <laughs> From the top, I think I fluffed my. Three, two, one. We have said that a clip. We've said that so many times. Mm. Can't believe it. Sometimes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> no van. But caravan, it's our cra- <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sorry. So without any further <laughs> So the features of our online- Online? So- <laughs> So let's weigh up the pros and cons a bit. <laughs> <laughs>